in the least impressive. Oh, well, I mean, who am I to pass up a transition like that? Please go right ahead. <laughs> well, you covered one of them already. I think the biggest one has got to be Monterey. I think not qualifying for the next round was definitely a big miss for them. I mean, I think Pumas and Austin might be a little bit of an underrated group. I think that's probably a little bit tougher than we had given it credit for, especially considering Austin played every game at home. But they absolutely should have been getting out of that group, 100%. And they had the opportunity to last night when they played Pumas. They they at least took it to penalties. If they won the penalty shootout, they moved on. But they were extremely disappointing in penalties. But it's a team that they shouldn't have even been in that situation. They should have they should have been able to get out of this group. And it, it was a very disappointing tournament for them. Uh, and people, and like you said, people are, be, I've already seen the millions of claims. Oh, geez, please. I've already, seen, <laughs> I've already seen the millions of claims talking about how Monterey doesn't care. You know, like I watched the one clip of, uh, I think it was Owen Wolf, mm-hmm. just kind of like dancing yeah, out of some tackles. Yeah. 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 And then played the ball in behind. And, uh, Everybody's like, oh, look, Monterey doesn't care. Like, watch them, like, not even try to defend. It's like, uh, pretty clearly to me, looked like they were trying to do an offside trap that just didn't work. And hence why they didn't move because they were trying to play him offside. But, you know, people have their agendas and they can stick with it. This is a really long winded way of me saying, um, Red Bull. I'm going to talk about Red Bull. No, you're not. You're out. Goodbye. Yes, I am. 100%. (laughs) I didn't, I still think Pachuca will top the group. However, I did have Red Bull second because I thought they should 100% be better than Toronto. Uh, they, they put up a good game against Pachuca. Like they took it to penalties. I think that's, you know, even if they weren't able to win that game, that's fine. But they should have beat Toronto, whether in penalties or just in regular time. I think they should have beat Toronto. And had they done that, I think they'd be in the next round and probably in that second place spot. However, they lost in penalties on both games and now they're out. And I think that's disappointing for them. But at the end of the day, and I, I think we've talked about this offline, probably a good thing for them, you know, get some time to recuperate, get some guys back from injury and just get ready to make a push uh, for the rest of the VMLS season. So probably a, a blessing in disguise for that team. Yeah, I mean, listen, I'm usually always right with predictions, as we know, but I don't think I've ever been this spot on where I sat down. And I was like, yeah, Red Bull's going to be third. And it's not because they're bad. It's because they can't win in penalties. They can't score. We've got <laughs> no depth and we suck at penalties. And what happens? We couldn't score. Our depth pieces did nothing, and then we get the penalties, and we choke it away not once, but twice. We were in the lead on both of those penalties and choked them away both times. I mean, it's just, it's next level terrible. And you're going to get that with with a young team that that we continue to rotate out and, and, and whatever. But again, as I mentioned in the preview episode, I'm not... I'm not super disappointed by this. I would have loved to play for the money. I would have loved to play for the, the Champions Cup spot. But in a team that's missing, that has two healthy center midfielders, a striker who can't score if you pass it to him on the goal line. I mean, a, a defensive group that is is holding on for dear life at this point, but we were playing with a, a right back at, at left back. We were playing with an attacking mid as a number six. We, you know, no Emil Forsberg. Peter Stroud was out injured. Tolkien gone on international duty. I mean, we were playing pretty bare bones. If, I think at one point, if you looked at our bench, it was a backup goalkeeper in Ryan Mara, um, a backup center back in maybe Reyes or, or, or somebody who wasn't on there. One backup midfielder who had some MLS time and the rest were literally teenagers, like eight teenagers on the bench. It, it just, we, we're so down bad right now. And that's why I wasn't shocked when we went out and and it's disappointing. I would have really loved to to move on and, and play other new teams. And I enjoyed the, the match against Pachuca. It was a different challenge and it, they, they approached it really well. But I'm more excited to see us come back a bit healthier. There's rumors that Jared Stroud might be in the mix for uh, Charlotte away, which hopefully I will be at the 24th of August. And that's just going to make the team better. Like we are, we we had to survive like a three week stretch to 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 get to past leagues cup because right now we are just running on fumes. So not super disappointed with that. However, a team that will be relatively disappointed, and I mentioned it before, if they don't get the result in, I believe it's tomorrow's match. Yeah, tomorrow's match is Colorado Rapids. Colorado comes in as a team that is doing fairly well in the MLS season, sitting fourth in the West with 41 points. I mean, they are five points clear of the, the, the drop out of the playoffs. They are seven, eight points outside of top of the West. I mean, they're right in it. And they just got 
walked by a Portland side that is really good at scoring goals, but also doesn't can you know doesn't keep them out very well. Uh, and I under and I understand the reasoning for this being the lack of players like a Jordi Mihailovic who can control the game. But uh, I, I believe that there was a really good description of it where Cole Bassett, who's usually playing as a as a, a six next to Connor Ronan, is being thrust into a number 10 role where Jordy used to play or usually plays. And it's throwing the whole chemistry off of the team. They don't really have that that ball progressing number six or a player at, at a number 10 who can do a job like Jordy Mihaljevic can. He's very, very unique, right? And then just underperformance of a lot of different players that you don't expect out of a group like this. So they're going to need a big rebound. And, you know, when we talk about Red Bull, who probably needed this to to go and back off and, you know, we'll try it again, uh, you know, next year or whatever. I don't think Colorado was in that group. I think this was a tournament Colorado could have gone decently far in. I know Leon's a tough team and it's going to go, uh, it's going to be relatively difficult for them. But I, I thought this was a tournament they could have gone at least, a, you know, a little bit farther in and then get a little bit of confidence behind them and say, you know, yeah, we can definitely make a press for top of the West or, or keep our home playoff spot or whatever it may be. This may be, you know, if they go into Leon and get smacked like three nothing, this could be a really bad end of the year for them. It could set up for a really, really bad spiral. That's what I, that's what I need. Colorado is outdoing my predictions for them in the standings. I need them to go down a little bit. So uh, I'd be on board for that. Uh, sorry, Colorado fans. I got to put my, my predictions ahead of your team. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll chime in with another disappointing team for me. FC Dallas. Uh, I had them top of that group. I can't remember if you had them top or if you had St. Louis top. I think I had Dallas top. I can't. I had St. Louis top. I okay. think Dallas too. But yeah, they've been, I think, highly disappointing. This was a 100% winnable group for them. I know they've struggled this year. I just think there's still too much talent in this team for them to not perform in a very winnable group for them. Uh, and I think they got done in by mainly their lack of goal scoring one goal in two games is not going to get you out of the group or at least majority of the time. And that was the case here. I think, I think we needed more from the attack for Dallas where I feel like they have the talent in that team to, to get more out of that attack and, and to not even take a game to penalties, I think is super disappointing for them as well to finish this tournament on zero points. Uh, it's something I'd expect. And we saw from a team like Chicago, I thought we'd get more out of Dallas to be honest. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that's that's totally fair. And I mean, Chicago, another one that you could throw into that same mix, a, a team that had the lead against uh, SKC. Another, you know, I mentioned a foot in the in the door of the next round, basically. I think both uh, for the Chicago group to look against SKC are through already. Yes, they are. But they had the lead. Kutsias had a, a goal in the 22nd minute and then they they folded. They crumbled and 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 lost two to one. Against Toluca, I don't think they were really in it. Actually, yeah, they were They were in the lead against Toluca too. Kutsias again with an eighth-minute goal. My, this guy pops up in League's Cup every year. I, I feel like I remember him doing the same thing in League's Cup last year. Like, oh my God, remember this Kutsias? Because I think I called him out as a player to watch at the very beginning of the season because of his performances. Like multiple times now. <laughs> yeah, because of his Kutsias. performances in League Cup. He comes back, <laughs> he does it again, and, you know, they, they fold. Now, Toluca wasn't as surprising, but Sporting KC, who is, you know, I'm lo- going to look at this lineup here. Willie got a started. Afrifa started out wide. There was no Johnny Russell in the starting line. Johnny Russell didn't even play. Uh, he might be injured. Yeah, he's probably injured. Back line, Kyrie Shelton playing as a right back. I mean, and I know they're converting him there. He's done relatively all right there uh, over time, but they're missing Jake Davis, right? So just a whole bunch of, of things where it's like, okay, you would expect to see a bit better out of that group. And it was a bit disappointing to, to see them not progress out of this now again this goes back to this idea of like roster congestion or whatever like i'm looking at this this chicago lineup hugo kuyper is nowhere to be found uh, i don't know if he got suspended or, or injured or, or what have you but tom barlow started next to coots yes chris brady on the bench with a jalen shannon a fc2 chicago fc2 player playing as the right center back next to Salquist and Sequet in a back three. Uh, Sequet, famously a outside back to my understanding. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure you're right. Right back, yep. Sequet playing as a right back on the left-hand side and Salquist, the only true center back in the starting team. 
even even the wingbacks aren't defenders. Right. Uh, and, 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 and Herbers. Herbers. Right. So, you know, we can go back to the whole schedule congestion thing and, and picking what you get to do. But it's quite clear that there were some teams that may not have taken this as seriously as others, even inside the MLS thing. That's a whole other conversation. The other team that I there, there's one other team. I don't know if you have another one you want to mention. Uh, no, go ahead. Yeah, the only other team I wanted to mention uh, in this kind of build up here is another team that's got pressure on them. They've got the new coach bump, who's supposed to be giving them this this extra energy, uh, and they fell relatively short against a relatively poor league MX side, and that is Nashville SC. King BJ comes in, and everybody expects him to be the savior that he was with the men's national team when they played against the Caribbean islands of uh, the Gold Cup, and blah, 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 and he's better than Greg, and blah, 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 and he comes in, and he gets up against a Mazatlan side that has finished, on average, between the Clasura and the current Apotora in 15th and a half place in Liga MX out of 17. And they're currently and 17th right now. They're currently 17th. I think they were 14th uh, last last Clasura, and they got absolutely walked off the pitch. They had 67% possession with one shot on target. Mazatlan said, yep. No problem. I'm going to sit right here, wait for you to make that inevitable mistake, and see you later. We're going to go. Now, again, they were missing players like Walker Zimmerman, for example, but this is you know a relatively strong lineup. You had Jacob Schaffelberg in there. You had Hani Mukhtar in there. Surge was in there. Our king and savior, Alex Mawil, starting on the right wing. There was a new debut for... Shaq Moore was in there. Who? Shaq Moore Shaq was Moore. in there. I mean, he went to the World Cup. <laughs> yeah. Um, Joe Willis also in goal. Uh, there was a debut for Yazbek playing in the in the center midfield. I wish I was able to catch that game. Unfortunately, I didn't. I hope that um, he gets some game time on Tuesday, it looks like, is the next game for them. I'd love to see him play because I think there's a, a lot of hype around him. But yeah, BJ's got a lot of work to do. I don't want to I don't want to put this like, oh, Nashville underperformed. I think we all expect them to be relatively iffy. Um, no, you're right. This was an underperformance. They should absolutely, they should definitely be Mazatlan. I don't know about that because I think I think they're in a really, really tough spot right now mentally. Like as a as a group trying to break out of their last four, five, their last six games. They've lost all six games. Combined score of two, four, eight, ten, sixteen, including the Mazat, Mazatlan game, is now eighteen goals against, four goals for. In the last seven games, this team is down ridiculously bad. They need a lot of work to come out of this, and it's not going to be fixed with one day of BJ Callahan saying, "Let's go, boys!" Like that's just that's just not realistic. That's right? not so, what I heard. That's not what I listen, heard. I, I thought I thought he was going to come in and immediately make Nashville supporter shield winners. Yeah, he was going to go in, win them a supporter shield in in six months, and then go instantly back to the men's national team job. But yeah, then we wouldn't I mean, be we wouldn't be allowed to have him because he's in MLS. So that's a True. that's a catch twenty two. He'd have, uh, I don't, he'd have I don't, to go overseas for a little bit. Yeah, yeah, he'd have to go be like the assistant manager in the Swedish third division before he could take that job. <laughs> that's um, what Greg did. Yeah, exactly. That's <laughs> what I mean. I don't think it's an underperformance from Nashville. But I think it'll be they do really, really well on Tuesday to show up and get a good result, even if they don't go through. Get a good result against New England. Be defensively strong. Have some sort of game plan go into effect see some patterns of play, get certain people involved. You're looking, I mean, they're still involved. They're still in the, the race. You know, they're not completely out of it in terms of, of leagues cup, but I don't, I don't quite care about if I'm Nashville, I don't quite care about moving on. Right. They would need to beat new England pretty heftily to move on on goal differential, which would be the, well, it'd be a head to head first, I believe. So just a win in regular time would put them through as the second place team think i don't i don't quite know how the rule the tiebreakers work once you get into the second game i I think this would be a really good way for them just to settle in and be like let's get it let's understand how to be defensively solid 18 goals in seven games is a brutal brutal run find a way to be be stronger than that set a foundation i don't know if you know with the the national team now out i don't know if walker zimmerman now is involved and gets to to be back in there but i think bj would do really well to have him in there and just find a way to get better at one thing in this game and then use the next two weeks if you don't make it through to figure it out on the training pitch. Talk about a battle of the mid. This Nashville New England game is going to be a rough one. I think I think that's what we call Group I was a stink fest. Yeah, bottom no of bottom of the league MX, and then the two of the worst teams in each conference of MLS. Yeah, Nashville in the worst form out of every MLS team, and the New England selling off anybody. On their literally, team. literally, what a disaster class this is going to be. Yeah. 